So the agenda for today's workshop is on the screen now. If you can't see my screen, uh, please drop a note in the chat and let me know. But I'm hopeful that you can. Um, so today we'll start out by talking about what WordPress plugins are and um, we'll talk about plugin maintenance. Next, I'll talk about updating content on your library website and I'll highlight the need to remove references to the legacy OverDrive app and mention some updates to the novel New York databases. And then we'll have time for questions. Um, let's start with plugins. A plugin is a piece of software which contains a group of functions that can be added to your WordPress website. So when um, you're in the WordPress dashboard in the left-hand side menu, you'll see a menu item that's specifically dedicated to plugins. And within that menu item, you can see the plugins that you have installed already on your site. You can modify the settings for those plugins that you've already got, or you can set up plugins that haven't been set up yet. And then you can also visit the add new page to add even more plugins to your website. So plugins are great because they can extend the functionality of your website or they can add new features to your web to your WordPress site. Um, and in the WordPress community, there's a saying, there's a plugin for that. And it really is true. There are so many plugins out there um, and they make it easy for users to add functionality and features to their websites without having to write code. So that's great. It's awesome that there are so many plugins to choose from and they're all out there in the world and available to us. Um, but when choosing a new plugin, there are some things that we'd like you to keep in mind. Um, these are free. So there is no tech support typically. Uh, STLS provides a list of plugins that we've already vetted and considered and that we're prepared to support. So if you choose something outside of the list of STLS vetted plugins, um, you're a little bit on your own. So we, we might say uh, install at your own risk. We're certainly still willing to help you if you've got a plugin that you're running that we haven't seen before, um, but just know that our familiarity with it is probably zero and we'll be starting from scratch and it'll just be a little bit harder for us to support a plugin that we've never seen before. So choose carefully when you're picking plugins um, and before you're installing, do check that STLS list. It's possible that we have a, a plugin that does what you're hoping uh, to do with a plugin that you found online, or you can just shoot us an email and say, I'm thinking about installing this plugin. I need to do this with my site. And we can take a look at it and let you know if there's something that we think might be better. If you see a plugin that you need and it's not on our list and you just wanna move forward, um, do take a minute and ask yourself some questions. So how long has it been since that plugin was updated? Are they maintaining it? Or have they just created it and they've put it out there and then they're not touching it, they're not updating it to go with WordPress core updates? Um, that orphan plugin might not be a good choice. Is it compatible with the latest version of WordPress? That's pretty key. So as you probably know, WordPress is getting updated occasionally and if any plugin that you've got installed on your site, you're gonna want those to be updated and continually updated to go along with WordPress updates. The next thing you wanna look at is how many active installations are there? So are lots of people using the plugin? Hopefully we wanna see um, over 100,000 installs is great. That's, that's a really good number. Um, and you'll see most of the plugins that are popular do have like over 500,000 installs and that's a really good sign. Then we know it's popular. A lot of people are using it. It's well vetted and um, there's a good network of support if you were to have issues with it. And then the last thing you wanna look at is what type of rating does that plugin have? So you'll see when you go to the add new plugins page, you can see how many active installs there are. You can see when it was last updated and you can also see the rating. And we're looking for a good number of stars, hopefully five stars um, before you install a plugin. So if you're able to answer yes or positively to those questions, then the plugin should be okay to install and use on your site. But we would ask that you be extra cautious. And this really goes for any time you're installing a new plugin, even if it's something that STLS has recommended. Please, 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 before you install a new plugin, use the Updraft Plus plugin, which hopefully you already have, um, and make a backup of your website before you install something new. Um, make sure that Updraft Plus is configured correctly and it's sending backups somewhere reliable that you're able to access, like a Google Drive folder or a Dropbox folder. Um, you can check this in the plugins menu and the settings for Updraft Plus sp specifically on the back end. If you're uncomfortable doing that or you're not sure how to get this set up, please just send me an email and we'll do a quick consultation and I'll show you how to set that up. All right. So let's take a look at the recommended plugins from STLS. 
So the list is on the screen now, and I've got it divided into three groups. The first set of six are all plugins that are for making specific parts of your site run or for helping you get data about your site. So Google Analytics will tell you how many website visits you've had, um, and it can give you a lot of other statistics about the most popular pages that are being visited, what countries are visitors coming from, um, what time of day are people visiting your site, stuff like that. You can get really nitty gritty data about your website. Um, you will need to know each year how many website visits you have um, for the annual report to the state. So Google Analytics is important for that reason, but it might also be useful if um, you or your library director are providing monthly reports to the board and the board is interested in knowing how many website visits you've had. If you are not getting monthly reports from Google Analytics or you're not sure, Again, please reach out to me um, and we can set up a consultation to see what's going on with that and make sure that you're getting website stats because those are important. Next in that list is Updraft Plus. That plugin allows you to make a backup of your library website. Um, it's really useful if something happens where your website's not loading or it seems like there's a problem. If you've got a backup made, then STLS IT staff can use that backup to fix your website. Um, or if you break it while making changes or updating a theme or just something weird happens and your site's not working, if you've got a backup, it's, it's much easier for STLS to help restore your site. If you don't, it's, a, it's more difficult and it's likely that you're going to lose changes in data that you've added recently. The Social Media Buttons plugin is fairly self-explanatory. It is a plugin that allows you to add buttons to your website for social media sites like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Same with the events calendar, also pretty self-explanatory. It's a plugin that allows you to have a calendar on your website where you can display upcoming events. Number five in that list on the left is Smush. So this is a compression plugin that we recommend. It will compress files like images and PDFs of board minutes that you upload to the media library on your website. Um, and the reason for this plugin is that um, when those files get compressed because they can be quite large, it will make your, white, your site run more efficiently and those images and uh, PDF files won't be bogging down your site when everybody is going to visit and find out what your library hours are. So you should occasionally open the plugin and um, there's a button within there that's called bulk smush and it will just go through and smush whatever the last you know, 10 to 15 image files are or where PDFs of board minutes are that you've uploaded to your site. And then number six in this first column is classic widgets. This is a new recommendation and I'm gonna explain that in more detail shortly. So I'll just flag it and know that we're going to talk about that in more detail in just a little bit. In the middle column, I've got another six plugins here. These are more for backend functionality of your site. You should have each of these installed and configured. And if you don't, or you're not sure how to set them up, again, just let me know. We'll set up a consultation and I'll walk you through the process. And um, when the, I have number six, Easy Updates Manager flagged, and I'll talk about that in more detail in just a little bit. And then in the last set here, those four plugins on the right-hand side, our plugins that we hope you are running, um, STLS IT staff should install these and set them up. So if you don't see them on your site, you can just let us know and we'll work to get them installed and configured for you. If they are there, please leave them there and don't delete them. They are necessary for security and the proper functioning of your library site. So let's talk about that classic widgets plugin that I mentioned. Um, it seems like recently a lot of folks have been struggling to update the widgets on their website, which are um, those little things that occur in the, usually they're in the right hand column, or sometimes you'll have two columns with center content. The things that are on the left and the right, or just on the right, those are, um, they're called widgets. And there's a special place within the, the dashboard to edit your widgets. And lately, most libraries have been encountering issues. Sometimes there's like a JSON error or you can't update the widget sidebar at all. You're just getting a little spinning wheel. So this is because WordPress recently switched the widgets editor to the block editor, which you might be familiar with. Um, a few years ago, WordPress switched us to the block editor for our pages of posts. And now they've done this for widgets as well. And while I love the block editor, Sometimes when they make a change like this, there's just a little bit of a rough patch while they get all the tweaks worked out. So to correct the problem for now, we recommend that you install and activate the classic widgets plugin. And this is going to revert you back to the classic 
WordPress widgets editor and it should allow you to edit your widgets with no problem. So go ahead and make a backup of your site, install and activate this plugin, and then you should be able to edit your widgets. And if you're still having trouble, feel free to send an email to me or reach out to the help desk and we'll be glad to help you. All right. So just like your website theme, WordPress software or your computer at home or in the library, plugins also require regular maintenance and updating. So you can't just install them and leave them alone forever. They're going to give you little warnings and let you know that they need to be updated for security. So you may occasionally notice update notifications on the dashboard when you log into the backside of your website, those little orange circles with numbers inside. The number tells you how many updates are needed. Sometimes it's a theme update, but often it's plugins you're running on your site that need updates. But the good news is there's a plugin that can help you keep up with all of those updates. It's called Easy Updates Manager. So once you install and activate that plugin, you'll need to open it and configure it just a bit, um, but it will take care of updating your plugins for you. So this is what it looks like when you go to install it. Uh, you can see the graphic for Easy Updates Manager and the, um, the WordPress user that created it, which is the Easy Updates Manager team. So um, once you've gone to the plugins page, search for this plugin to add it to your collection of plugins. Um, you'll have to just open the settings and do some minor configuration, as I mentioned. So we recommend that you allow the plugin to manage all other plugin updates and minor WordPress updates, but we would recommend that you do not allow it to, ma to manage major WordPress core updates and also don't let it update your theme. Those are two things that you should do manually after creating a backup of your website. Let's move on to updating the content of your sites. So right now there are two major content upgrades that we've been talking about. You've probably seen my digital updates emails um, or other Facebook notifications or messages or posts about this um, where we've been trying to let you know that number one, you need to remove references to the Legacy Overdrive app from your library websites. All patrons should be making the switch to the Libby app, which is Overdrive's new app, unless they're using a Kindle. And I recognize that this can cause confusion. Um, Amazon hasn't worked out a deal with Overdrive yet to allow Kindle users to install the Libby app. So anybody using a Kindle does still need to run that legacy Overdrive app. And please note, um, stls.overdrive.com is still a website. Overdrive is still the name of the company. Um, they're just getting rid of the app called Overdrive, which I know can be a little bit confusing. But Overdrive still exists just not the old app. The Novel New York databases also got a new look this summer, so they've revamped their logo, it looks nice, and then they have a more direct link to get to the databases on the Novel New York website, so please make sure that you're using the new logo and linking to the correct website. And then and other things I just want to call attention to that I've noticed in the past couple of months while visiting library websites, if you're still referencing RB Digital on your website, please remove all mentions of that platform. We terminated our contract with RB Digital last spring and we have magazines through Overdrive now. We're really excited about that because they're much easier to access and we do want patrons to take advantage of Overdrive magazines. So instead of talking about RB Digital, maybe download a graphic from Overdrive and promote those Overdrive magazines instead. And while you're making these changes, if you want to just take some time, look through the rest of your website pages and posts if you use posts, um, and just check to make sure there's no other outdated or inaccurate content. So I already mentioned these things, but I just want to call your attention to it again. Um, removing images and references to the Legacy Overdrive app and promote the Libby app instead. And I mentioned that um, Overdrive might have resources for promoting their content, like the magazines or the Libby app, and I'll drop a link in the chat to where those are on the Overdrive website. So you can go to that link that I just put in the chat box and you'll find social media posts, flyers, um, links to the logos that you might need, anything you would want to talk to your patrons about using Overdrive or making the change to Libby, you can find those there. You should also update the Novel New York logo and link for those Novel New York databases. 
and um, I'm dropping a link in the chat now to their new website where they um, have made it much easier to interact with the Novel New York databases. So if you'd like, you can link directly to the Novel New York page. They'll keep that updated um, and your patrons shouldn't have any trouble um, finding the databases if you link right to that page there. Um, other content you might consider including on your site would include board minutes. So um, you should use your library website and your social media accounts to let the public know when your board is meeting. Libraries do need to retain board meeting minutes um, indefinitely per New York State Records Retention Law, but a best practice for keeping them on your website uh, is about three to five years. So STLS currently hosts the most recent three years of minutes and the current year as well on, its, on our website. Um, so we would recommend that you, you aim for three to five years of board minutes available on your library website. And then you should also be posting those minutes as quickly as possible, but within 30 days of the meeting happening. We also recommend that you take a look at your um, the hours that you have posted for your library and any contact information that you have listed to make sure that it's correct and also easily discoverable on your library's website. So. Not all visitors will be coming for that information, but those who are looking for your phone number and hours probably want to find it quickly and easily. So if you can, make sure it's near the top of the page in a widget at the top of the widgets bar and also make sure it's correct because there's nothing more frustrating than looking up the hours for a business and then arriving to find that they're wrong. And then we also want to check to make sure that you're using the current version of the StarCat logo and that the catalog link you're using is um, is up to date and operational. So if you've got a search bar for the catalog, test it out. Does it actually work? Can you get to the library, to the ILS and find the title that you've searched for? Um, and then also make sure you're using a current version of the StarCat logo. I'll drop a link in the chat to a page on the STLS website where all of those live. So you can choose the one that you like and download it and use it. You wanna also make sure that you're linking to the STLS Overdrive collection on your website so that patrons can easily get there. And then there's a web version of the Libby app that you can link to if you'd like to share that with your patrons as well. So I've covered a lot of information in a short amount of time, but I wanted to make sure to leave plenty of time for questions, especially about the widgets issue that's been going around. Um, and then if you have questions about the changes to the Overdrive app, anything like that, now would be a great time and I'm happy to answer them. Ken, is there a way to any way to make our site load a little faster? It seems slow. Um, Ken, I would recommend a few things. So I would take a look at your media library and see if there's anything you can get rid of in there. If if in the past the site's been used for photo storage in particular, I would work toward getting those photos unloaded and only keep graphics and photos that you need and are currently using on pages of the site. Make sure you run the Smush plugin to compress all of those media files. You can open the WP Optimize plugin and run all the database optimizations that are um, pre-checked there. That should help speed things up. It'll clean up any deleted like post revisions and content that's unnecessary on your site. Um, really just paring it down however you can is the best way to make your site load faster. 